November 17, 1921. Dear Mary, I don't know whether Mother has had time to write to you or Anna since the important things have happened in the past few days, so I'm going to just send a brief note so that you would not get the first news of the fire and other things from the press. You know Monday morning I left for a trip to Lee's Ferry. Mr. Coke, Arthur, and Dave Babbitt were in our car, and Billy Babbitt, Father Vabre, and some others, about twelve in all. We arrived at Lee's Ferry after a wonderful trip, just before dark. The road leading down to the river would take a considerable time to describe and had me pretty well scared, as I think it had most people. And if there was any way of getting back without going on this road, you may be sure that I would not have gone, if I did not have to admit that I was scared. However, we got back through it all right too, and had a wonderful trip up the river. Four and a half miles, and it was certainly a wonderful experience. My name is Mary Reardon Chambers. I'm the first daughter of Timothy Reardon and Caroline Metz. My family is very close-knit, and we're really passionate about this beautiful land we're living on, as you can tell from that letter that my father sent me in 1921. I was born in 1890, right around the time my father and uncle incorporated their logging business and began working on new projects around the city of Flagstaff. Here's a photo of me and some friends sitting on a log when I was about six years old. Flagstaff has grown so much since my family moved here, and today we're going to see how my father and his brothers helped build and strengthen the community through their contributions to the local economy, improving access to education, and supporting local scientific endeavors. Here's my dad, Timothy. Let's talk to him about his logging business. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Reardon, and I help manage the Arizona Lumber and Timber Company, along with my brothers, Matt and Michael. Before we owned the Arizona Lumber and Timber Company, Edward Ayer built a lumber mill in Flagstaff. A few years after it was created, Matt was asked to come out and manage the Ayer Lumber Company in 1884. My brother had a great eye for business and saw the potential of having a lumber mill in the middle of the largest ponderosa pine forest in the world. Soon after Matt's arrival to Flagstaff, he invited my brother Michael and I to come out and help him manage the mill. In 1887, three years after I arrived, the owner Edward Ayer offered to sell the company to my brother Matt. He agreed to buy, and when he returned from Chicago where the deal was done, he started the Arizona Lumber Company. The total amount that we spent to purchase the mill was $145,000. That was a lot of money for us to spend, but I agreed with my brothers and knew that this was going to pay off for us, and it eventually did. A few years later, in 1889, we purchased the Arizona Mineral Belt Railroad to help speed up production and expand our company. The railroad helped us move timber quickly from Flagstaff to other locations around the area, like the town of Globe, where lumber was needed to expand the town and help in the mining process. With this purchase, our business took off and began to succeed beyond expectations. My brother Matt left Michael and myself in charge of running the day-to-day -day operations while he spent most of his time negotiating deals. The biggest contract my brother Matt secured for us was in December of 1889, when we got a four-way contract with the Atlantic and Pacific Railway, the Aztec Cattle Company, and the Arizona Cattle Company for timber rights on over 957,000 acres of land over the next 25 years. With this contract, we became the biggest lumber company in the state of Arizona. After this contract, we reincorporated our company and changed our name to the Arizona Lumber and Timber Company in 1890. Well, enough about the lumber side of the family. Let's send it over to Michael and hear what he has to say about some of the public education we have helped with in Flagstaff. Hi, my name is Michael Reardon. I hope everyone learned a thing or two from my brother Tim. Being successful businessmen was not our only motive here in Flagstaff. As much as we valued providing employment to the community, we are also strong advocates of education. Opportunities were scarce at the time, which is why I successfully argued for one of the first public schools to be built, twice as big as initially planned, and took on the task of selling the bonds to pay for the costs. In the fall of 1895, the Emerson School began its first term, and sure enough, enrollment was up by 50%, just as I predicted. My brother Matt established the first public library a short time after. He also donated 600 volumes from his personal collection, while his wife served as the organizer and director for a fundraising event for the Flagstaff Free Library Association. 
Together, Matt and I ran a local committee that offered free series of lectures from credible scientists of all fields, which ultimately resulted in a National Geographic article, The Forests and Deserts of Arizona, which gave Flagstaff the scientific publicity it needed at the time. As Flagstaff became more oriented around science and education, the citizens urged for a normal school, a teacher training facility that would benefit the town in a variety of ways. My brother Tim and I were dedicated to making the normal school a reality as firm believers in the benefits education can bring to society. After multiple years of pol political maneuvering, we finally got our chance. We traveled to Phoenix for two weeks to lobby the normal school bill, and our hard work finally paid off. In 1899, the bill passed and the Northern Arizona Normal School was underway. Over the next few years, Tim and I both served on the board and took every action possible to expand and improve the school. We helped it transition from a two-year teacher school into a four-year university. Known today as Northern Arizona University, the school is now home to almost 30,000 students and offers hundreds of degrees in various fields. Not only did we promote educational opportunities by launching schools, we also encouraged scientists from all over to travel to Flagstaff to develop their studies and set up their own institutions. Hello, my name is Andrew Ellicott Douglas, but my friends just call me Andy. In 1894, I was on a huge mission. What was that mission, you may ask? That mission was to find a place that I could put a telescope. But not just any telescope, no. Nah. This telescope was for the one and only Percival Lowell. Maybe you've heard of him. During my mission to find the perfect place to put this telescope, I had a combination of three qualities in mind that the location of this telescope would have to have. These three qualities were one. The telescope would have to be at a high enough elevation which would limit atmospheric pressure. Two, the telescope would have to be a far distance away from any cities with their smoggy skies. And three, the location would have to have accessibility by transportation. During this mission to find the perfect combination of these three qualities, I was wined and dined and brought all across the territory to check out the different possible locations for the telescope. Eventually, my good friend Matt Riordan realized the benefits that an observatory could bring to the community of Flagstaff and immediately invited me to Flagstaff and to stay in his home while I conducted my experiments to see if Flagstaff would be a good location for the telescope. As soon as I announced my decision to choose Flagstaff as the location of Lowell's new telescope in April of 1894, Matt gathered together leading citizens from all around Flagstaff who drafted a document offering Lowell 10 to 15 acres of land of his choosing for the sum of one dollar. They also pledged to build and maintain a wagon road from the railroad station to the new observatory. This new observatory went down in history as the first permanent scientific research facility to be established in Flagstaff and that is how Lowell Observatory planted its roots in our beloved town of Flagstaff. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I hope you all learned something new about Flagstaff. You know, it's crazy to think how a couple of hard-working folks determined to create a good life for their families turned into what it is today. The Arizona Lumber Company employed thousands of workers and enormously boosted the economy of this little town paving the way for more people to live here permanently and pursue an education. And it was important for my family to have an iconic scientific facility at Lowell Observatory. I hope you all have enjoyed our time together learning about the Reardons and how we've been spending our time here in this little mountain town.